Hello there guys, I'm Unstable Voltage, and today I'm going to be taking a quick look at a puzzle platformer called Toby the Secret Mine. This game popped up on Steam a couple of days ago, and I was sent a key so that I could uh, basically have a look at it and see what it was like. There was a time I used to play a lot of platform games, mostly on console, it's been a little while. I think in fact the last platform of any description I played was probably Little Big Planet 2 on the PlayStation Vita, but this one um, looked quite interesting, it had a very interesting and unusual aspect and apparently it draws its inspiration from games like Limbo, which you can quite clearly see in its visual style. It's uh, by a one-man development team who, I'm just going to look at the credits here, I believe his name is Lucas Navratil, let me just double check that, is indeed uh, Lucas Navratil, hopefully I haven't completely butchered his name there, so apologies if I had. Uh, this uh, is basically a one-man development team with a freelance artist and musician, and um, for such a small team... It's actually a very, very interesting looking game. This is the options menu, by the way. There's literally a volume slider, and it's an overall volume slide. A little bit disappointing. The game actually has quite a nice soundtrack. I really like the music on this game. It's a shame you can't turn the sound effects down a little bit and just keep the music running. Um, probably got a little bit high, because I'd love you guys to be able to hear the soundtrack on this. It is really, really nice. Now, this is a Unity engine game. So, all of the options for graphics, and I say all of the options, resolution, windowed mode, and basically fast, standard, or pretty graphics. The general Unity options menu it is in a pre-game launcher. Controls are very simple. You've literally got uh, jump, left and right, and use. That's it. It's literally a three-button, uh, four-button game. Uh, it is compatible with the controller. I find it controls pretty fine on a keyboard. You might get a little bit more precision on a controller. Personal preference. It depends how uh, depends how good you are with a controller. Or at least how good you are with a keyboard. So the game does keep track of certain things. You can see up here in the right hand corner. The, it keeps track of the number of deaths you've had. And also the number of these little fellas that you've uh, rescued in this puzzle platform. And that's the main aim of this game. Rescuing these guys. And um, the game doesn't really give you any kind of real tutorial. Any real story. There's no narrative. There's no voice acting. It's all basically given to you in the on-screen visu visuals. Once you've cleared a level and unlocked it, you do get this map so that you can go through and just go back to something that you have already done. Uh, what I'm going to do is um, hopefully just sort of uh, restart. So I'm going to start a new game and all progress is going to be lost here. So as the game starts, I'm going to get rid of the mouse pointer. We don't really need it. So this is before the game is even sort of really started here. And you'll notice that first thing you see is there isn't really a UI. Apart from the exit button up there in the top left hand corner, there's, there's nothing really here. Everything is quite sort of um, hidden out of the way. Uh, some of the lighting effects in this for a Unity engine game are actually really, really nice. I mean, just look at the, uh, the lens flare that's coming up there from the, from the sun in the top left. That looks really, really nice. Now, obviously most of the game uh, takes place in this sort of silhouette format. Which is not a bad thing. I mean, that's the main purpose of it. That's the, the aesthetic that they're going for here. So this is the sort of... Uh, the guy with the red eyes is the antagonist in this story. He's the guy that's running off and capturing all of our... I uh, don't know whether they're our friends or our siblings or whatever. But these little guys that we have to rescue. He's the one that's running off with them all who we're chasing down. I absolutely love this use of objects in the foreground that give some sort of depth of field to what is a two-dimensional game. And also, you know, they also sort of provide some obscurity to what's going on. Now, that to some people can seem like a bad design choice. Like, why would you want to obscure what's going on in the game? But that is the way this game works. Because it's actually all in that sort of shadow, it's all, it's all dark. That is used as a mechanic to obscure some of the secrets and the puzzles and I'll show you that as we go through so that wasn't even technically the start of the game that was just sort of the the intro the prologue if you like so you will notice that each time we go to a new level there is a, a sort of a different biome this one looks different the background image is different again look at that lens flare for a unity engine game that is actually some really good lighting effects there so let's carry on and again, the controls, literally, I'm just using the keyboard here, W, A, S, and D, W is jump, move left and right, and then I can either use um, S down, basically, for use, or space for use, I think enter works for use as well, so there's, a, there's a quite a few different buttons that do the same thing, I think you can actually remap them in the launcher, but 
Don't really need to do that. So we're going to go and try and get our first friend back. There are things on the uh, map that you can interact with. Like these beehives, sometimes you can actually knock them off. I've, I found a couple that you can. But as you can see, it's already getting difficult to see what's going on because of all of the uh, silhouetting that's going on right here. And sometimes you do find, if you drop down into these little holes, that you'll suddenly find a cave or something that you didn't know was there before. And that's the beauty of this game. A lot of things are hidden, and you have to do a little bit of exploring to find them. So this guy there drops a rock, and that drops the platform. So how do I get up to him? Well, what you can't see is if I continue over here to the right... I did find this before. Maybe it was to the left, because I've now forgotten where it was. But there is a way of getting in here. Was it over this side? Let's jump up there. Nope, it is there. Oh, do I have to use the use button? I have played through this once before, and then I've forgotten what it was. Do I just have to keep pushing it? Yeah, just have to keep pushing it. There we go. Didn't push it for quite long enough. So, as you can see, it does have these little indicators that come up, especially on the early levels, because it's more, acting as a little bit as of a tutorial. So, we're going to go over here, and you'll see this thing, which looks like it could be part of the scenery, but it's actually a box that we can push around. So, we can push this box over to this side, jump up beneath our little friend there, and we can jump up and rescue the first guy. So, there we go. We've managed to get the first one out of the 26 there are to rescue. Carry on pushing this box forward. So, obviously, the early levels are quite simple. It's just trying to introduce you to the mechanics. This guy's going to go ahead and fire his arrow at us. Can we get below him? No, there's no way down there. Let's just go back up and, and carry on sort of heading towards him. Hopefully not getting shot. No, he's just going to run off. So we've got another one of these beehive things over here. And I, I love the interaction with the sort of the bees, the flies and the leaves, all the debris that flies around in the background. That actually looks quite, uh, quite nice. I do like that. Now what happens if you fall down one of these holes? Because of course you can get stuck. But sometimes it's difficult to see, but there are platforms that you can jump on. And again, that's where the sort of silhouetting comes into play. So let's go through and show you guys a little bit more. So here's some sort of weird contraption. There's a lot of these things, that little animals and creatures, that, that you don't really interact with. They don't do an awful lot here. So what do we do here? How do we get up to this ledge? Well, it's actually giving us the answer because it is an early level. So we'll go ahead and flick this switch. And it's actually lowering this wall over here. Now that just gives us simple access to one of these boxes which we can push out and use as a platform. So, we're looking at some very sort of simple puzzles at the moment, mostly just involving finding hidden areas, hitting some switches, grabbing some of these boxes so we can get around. And uh, so far I haven't had any direct encounters with the protagonist. Whenever you get close to him, he just tends to run away. So there you go, I did manage to knock that beehive off. So again, we've got another little lamp switch here that we can pull, so we'll do that. Lowers the weight and lifts up this platform. Now, the question is, why would that have been there in the first place? Can I interact with it again? Yes, I can. Does that mean that there's a hidden secret down here? Is there a, an opening I can go through? It's always worth checking. Mind you, I suppose we wouldn't have been able to get through there with it being closed. But it makes me wonder why that just wasn't a ledge there in the first place. But we'll carry on. Keep heading to the east. Now, the levels are actually quite short. It doesn't take long to get to the end of each level. Now, you will find sometimes that those little guys do end up getting hidden. So there we go, we've already gotten to the end of the first level, we'll just quickly move on to the second. Show you guys a couple of the levels, I'm not going to go all the way through the game here. Again, another biome, the background has changed, the aesthetic remains constant throughout. Now you see down there there's some spikes, if I were to fall on those I would die, and dying just basically resets you back to the beginning of the level. It's not a terrible um, hardship if you die. And from what I can see the game seems to have an infinite number of continues, so that's okay. Can we knock this one off? I'm not even sure if there's any purpose to it. There we go. Managed to knock another one down there. So let's carry on moving forward again. Now we're starting to get into a more traditional puzzle platform arena here where we're actually getting ledges that drop away from us and that will certainly kill us. Now some of these are quite interesting. You've obviously got this big plant here that's going to chomp on us and somehow I managed to figure this one out first time. I don't know how but... It was knocking these things off. If you knock these things off, that guy runs to eat it. And while he's eating that guy, we can just sneak past him. So we drop down here. He runs off again. There's another cage. It's always worth having a look around. Because if I hadn't have gone to the left there, wouldn't have found that guy. Wouldn't have been able to rescue him. So this is where the silhouetting 
really takes part in the mechanics of this game. Let's see if we can see all of these Ys and things, all these pulleys. We know that there's another switch around here somewhere. We can go here to the right, and there's our lever. Now, we can't get up here, but as these pulleys go all the way to the left, they must have actually triggered something over here. And yes, they have. There's a, a platform. If we're quick enough, we can run and jump and get onto there. So we'll run up there, and then there's actually a platform here. And again, there's a box, which we probably wouldn't have even seen while it was in silhouette. But now we can use that box. Use that to get over to the next platform. Now, one thing I did say about this game is it does have a really, really nice soundtrack. I actually really do like the music for this game. I'm just going to shut up for a minute and just, you know, play for a minute or two. Just let you listen to the music here. as I unexpectedly get to the end of another level. So here's another level, again. Another different aesthetic, slightly different background, and I've got some bombs to dodge. So go ahead, carry on having a listen while I try and get past this uh, annoying guy here. So as you can hear, the music also changes when you encounter one of those guys. So I've got to switch up here, a lever that I can't actually reach right now. And I've also got a crate up there that I can't get to. But this thing here is a little elevator that we can use. So if we hop up here and grab this crate, just check to the right. Can we go over there? No, we can't. So we'll go ahead and we will push this thing over here. Let's just um, do this correctly, actually. Because I do remember this puzzle. I'll save myself some time later if I just go down here and drop the elevator. So we'll push this box, use this one to get up here and throw this switch. Maybe it's not the puzzle that I thought it was, but it has done something. It's raised the platform. We need to go back up with this. Push this over. I know I did a few of these puzzles last night, and a few of the um, puzzles were quite similar in the early stages, and I think I've just got two of them confused. There he is again, running off. Obviously, it's all scripted. I don't think there's any, any way to actually catch up with the guy. He's always just going to run away there. So one of our buddies is up there. We need to rescue him. How do we get up to him? Well, there's a trick to this. First of all, we need one of these boxes. Now, there's another box up there, you'll notice. We're going to need to grab that box as well. Uh, also, it's worth re remembering, look at that little signpost that's up there on the right-hand side. We need to sort of keep our eye on that and remember what that looks like. So that's sort of a, a hexagon shape. So we'll keep our eye on that. Let's jump up here. There's another box here, of course. We will want that very, very shortly. Let's just go ahead and push that down there right now. And you can now see that we actually have a second icon, which is an X with a line underneath it. So let's go and rescue our buddy again. There we go, we've got three of them. So now we've got two of these boxes. Now, we're probably going to need to stack them one on top of another, which is going to be really, really difficult. Unless, of course, we use this. So we send one of the crates down on the elevator. We push the second crate on top of the first. Lift them both up. And then there is a bit of physics involved, so they do tend to slide around, but that physics makes the top crate slide and gives us a little platform there where we can actually stand on. So we've seen two of these icons. We've got another elevator here. Let's go ahead and use that. It's always worth jumping up. Sometimes you actually find things hidden above you as well. And then we have a little circle with two lines to it. So if we go over here to this thing and access it, and basically, we just want the three icons that we've seen. So it's this one, this one, and this one. So a simple little puzzle that just opens the way 
I think those were the same three icons last time as well. I don't think they actually ever change. And we're going through into the next level. Now, I don't know exactly the total number of levels as we get into another different biome with a very nice rain effect. I do like the rain effect on this one. Uh, it does mean you can drown, though, if you fall into one of these puddles. So, I don't know exactly how many levels there are, but from what I've heard, it takes about... Uh, and that's exactly what I mean about things being hidden above you. Look at that guy up there. Uh, it takes about three hours to complete the game fully. So... It's not a terribly expensive game. It is currently £6.99 on Steam. And that's probably about $9.99, but don't quote me on that. I don't know exactly, but... £6.99 in pounds, £9.99 in dollars seems about the right equivalent. And there we go, I did miss time a jump there. It is a little bit difficult with some of these things. And uh, I was actually uh, incorrect, it doesn't take you straight back to the beginning of the level. There are actually checkpoints. So the first time I went too early, the second time I went too late, as you can see, there's a very, very precise timing that you have to get to avoid some of these things. I've got room to jump down here. So we'll just carry on for a little bit longer. So, the things that I like most about this game is you, you've got a game that's created by such a small indie team. And he's going to lock me out there, this switch no longer works. You've got a game that's created by such a small team. And the design is simple. You know, the game looks very simple, but it's also really well done. The big thing that tends to affect a lot of indie games is always the fact that they don't have graphics anywhere near as good as you'd get with a AAA, which is always going to be the case you know indie developers don't have the experience they don't have the technical expertise they don't have the money for expensive software and assets that they can use so their games are never going to look as um, expensive as polished as high quality as a triple-a game but do they need to uh, the question the answer to that is I don't actually think they do um, so obviously, again, there's another puzzle I messed up because I went at the wrong time there. You know, this game actually does a very, very good job of using a simple graphical style that really works well for it. You know, the game does look good. We'll jump down here. Oh, obviously missed that one. Did I actually mention, by the way, that I, oh, I am terrible at puzzle platformers? I've died more times in the last couple of minutes while trying to talk about this puzzle than I have in all the other time that I have played it. So let's give, go ahead and give this one more try. I'm going to end the video very shortly anyway because I've been going on about it for a while now. Now, can we get up there? Yes, we can. That is good. Have another little bit of an explore up here. And we found a key. So, I guess the question should be for most people is, how much do you like puzzle platformers? Well, we've got a switch here of some description. How much do you like puzzle platformers and is £6.99 or $10 worth your money? I honestly can't say on this one. And the reason I'm not going to say is not because I don't think it's a good game. It's simply because I haven't played enough platform games in recent years to honestly make that assessment. I actually think what what the developer has done here is, is... Oh, that was terribly bad, wasn't it? I actually think what the developer has done here is, is very, very good. I've recently been doing a course to learn Unity, and it's not the easiest thing to create a game. So... To see something like this come from a one-man studio is absolutely amazing. Ah, it looks like there's a, a mechanic here to uh, get this thing to swing. So there are new puzzles being presented to the player all the time. Obviously you have to get some momentum going on this. Seems to be a little bit tricky. Obviously, we've got to be careful here. We don't want to run into this thing either. Let's give it a go. Yeah, yeah, we only just made it there. Let's see if we can get this one swinging. Now, I'm not sure if this is the sort of game that I would play through to completion, simply because, as I said, I don't really play um, platform games and puzzle platform games anymore. But it was certainly an interesting one to see. 
And it is not a bad game, not a bad game at all. And I've gone ahead and screwed that right up, haven't I? Hopefully that hasn't put me right back to the start, and it has, so I'm going to use that as a good point to exit. But this has been uh, Toby, The Secret Mine, an interesting little puzzle platformer currently available on Steam. Go and check it out. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye for now.